have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I am, of course, Josh Williams. And I'm James Sheridan. And thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm trying something a little different. That way I'm looking at James through the computer, but you guys are right here. I'm watching looking at you guys as well. But we're here. You click the video. You know what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the season premiere of season one, probably, of The Last of Us. And this, I'm we'll see how it goes. Right. We're going to preface this that we're talking as if you guys have seen this episode. So this is a spoiler heavy a review of this episode one. And we're not going to now we will preface also that me and James have both played the game. So we know what happens throughout the rest of the story. But we're only going to be talking about this one episode as if it's only you have seen this episode only. So if you haven't, go watch the show on HBO Max. It's fucking well worth it. Why wouldn't you? And then come back and join in the conversation so you don't get anything spoiled for you. Now. I like in the background, James. That's really cool. You Thank always you. come up with good backgrounds. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start us off here. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, this show is um, written and produced, like pretty much, I would say, written and created. Because there's different uh, directors for each episode, but it's uh, written and, and created by Craig Mazine, especially Neil uh, Duckman, Druckman, sorry, Druckman. who created the game itself. And it stars just a slew of people. I mean, you've got. Uh, Pedro Bella Pascal, Ramsey. yeah, Bella Ramsey, Gabriel Luna, Merle Dandridge, who was also in the game, yep, uh, reprising her role as Marlene, Anna Torv, um, Jeffrey Pierce, like Nico um, Parker, yep, um, and of Brendan course, Pedro Fletcher. Pascal. and there, there's a whole bunch of people that like are on the list. Up. Yeah, we're, like there, there's some exciting names that are coming up, but we're not going to get to those because I don't want to spoil yep. them yet. And One in particular, I'm very looking forward to, but right? we'll get to that. And definitely, like I said, most importantly, Pedro Pascal, who just owns this episode. Oh, my God. Can so this guy catch a break? Off. Because he, he he always seems to be, you know, this father figure to, like, these lost children. He, he's getting a little typecast now, but... Yeah. Um, I find it a little funny. He did he get asked in an interview, who is a, who's a better companion, Ella or Grogu? And he goes, ooh. He goes, well... Yeah, it was um, sorry. Ellie could you know talk back to him and yeah, you know gonna say you can hold a conversation with whereas, her. Whereas Grogu can throw me around the room with no issues. So <laughs> that said, there, there's moments where people will talk to the puppet uh -huh. um, on the Mandalorian, and it will act like the puppeteers will hear it, and they'll like manipulate it between scenes just to kind of mess with people. And <laughs> yep, people I treat it that. as if it's a real entity, and I love that. I love that. That's so let's topic. go ahead and start off with you, James. Like, like as always, let's start off with your just your score of the first episode, and just what do you think? I mean, just start off as like the opening scene. Like, oh my god! But go ahead, man. I'm I'm hesitant to give this rating to anything, but if there's been anything on my time in this um, show that deserves this rating, this episode gets a ten out of ten for me. Yeah, it was, yeah. Wow. This episode was virtually flawless. Um, not just in its own storytelling, but how it adapted a fantastic story from the game. Um, as you noted, we both, you know, played the game, watched other people play the game. I just rewatched it just to refresh myself on, you know, some of the continuity and all that stuff. And the game has, the Last of Us game has always been, since it came out, like sort of a benchmark of just how to do good storytelling in a video game. And it's always nebulous about like how how these adaptations are going to turn out. This one nailed it. This one nailed um, so many different aspects. It, it it nailed the character development, establishing certain um, key story points that will play out later in the story, um, establishing certain sort of like inciting things that um, are going to be so important to the character development of certain characters who in my opinion that was the heart of the game was the development of those characters um there's lots of great setup for stuff that's to come and uh as any good adaptation does there were things thrown left and right to um kind of surprise me and little yeah. changes they made none of it felt 
intrusive or well this is out of place and it doesn't fit with the video game it's like I, I'm willing to go with this and usually it, I mean in every instance it paid off um, like right from the opening scene the opening of the video game opens on um, Joel and his daughter yep um, this one opens on a um, television 19, show yeah, discussion panel in the 1960s about the differences between viruses and fungal invasions which is so important to this, this story, story. Oh, yeah. because a lot of zombies lore is based on either the walking dead or um sort of some sort of viral contagion yep. um and this is very much not a viral contagion and because of that it's going to produce very difficult circumstances to try and fight it the guy basically said himself you know there is no cure for this kind of thing and that that sets up perfectly what the stakes of this show are going to be um oh, yeah. And by the end of the episode, we are very pointedly, and I, I knew this was how they were going to end that episode because it's the perfect way to um, wrap up the story, the the, the beginning storyline, um, and set us on our path of what the stakes are for the rest of the show. And that's discovering that Ellie has the virus. She has been bitten, but she has not turned. Yep. So there's something specific about this girl that is different and important. And at all costs, we must make sure this child gets to where she needs to go so that we can try and fight this fungal invasion some sort of way we don't know how we don't know right. you know what can be done but clearly something diff- is different about this girl and the book end of those two is just beautifully po- beautiful poetry as you alluded to the opening the opening scene from the game um where the like all hell breaks loose um was so masterfully handled it, it, it brought me right back to the game it was a giant cut punch just the way it was in the game yep. of joel losing his daughter uh, establishing their relationship in just a few s- short minutes and whatnot, um, and, and just understanding just how much this is going to affect him as a person moving forward and whatnot. Um, he, like th- the first time we see him 20 years later, he's just a completely changed man, completely apathetic to the suffering of others, yep. only cares about you know him and his situation. Um, and at this point, like that that turn of like a doting father to just this absolutely broken human being um, was so well done. The performance oh, of um, Pedro Pascal was just perfect. And that, that to me, when I saw that in the trailer that they were doing that scene, I knew that they were on the right track with this show, um, which I didn't know at the time that Neil Druckmann was going to be involved in this, which tells me that, you know, the someone who's responsible for the game is at least somewhat responsible for the creativity in the show. Um, and the sort of the expansion of the lore and the the, to- the story that they're telling. So I know they're in good hands, but having seen that scene in the trailer just kind of gave me enough hope because as I said, like so many video game adaptations fail. So many video game adaptations just kind of take very broad strokes with the uh, canon material and ignore so much of it. Ryan recently was rewatching um, the Street Fighter movie and I've said for years that movie is utter garbage. I don't even find it like ironically enjoyable the way other people do. I just find it frustratingly bad. And <laughs> um, to me, it's sort of the, the the other direction of benchmark for like how not to do an adaptation kind of thing. Um, right. Other people will say like Dragon Ball Evolution, which That's you know abysmal. took took so many liberties with the characters. God. Um, one of my favorites to point to, even though it was hugely popular, was um, the Resident Evil films. We're so are- far from the mark from the, the games and just we're so abysmal and so terrible. Um, I can't even enjoy them. Like later on when they started bringing in characters from the games, it's like a little too, it's too little too late. Now it doesn't fit into like the story that they told in the games and why the games were so exciting and good. Um, this is not that this is just it, it's pitch perfect from, you know, dialogue they've taken from the game the music as soon as those opening credits started rolling and right. i heard that guitar like my heart skipped a beat because i was <laughs> so excited for just like they know what they're doing yeah and it's just loved, i love that opening so much that i me mean too. i will say game uh, hbo as a whole does great openings like from that game of thrones to this to you, know, you can kind of go on and on to different ones but well, this the one had a little bit. Great. The opening of this was very similar to the opening of the game, except it didn't have the um, the voiceover that kind of yeah. gave context in the game. But like, it's still reminiscent of that. And um, 
does have sort of a Game of Thrones kind of like the the stretching building sort of world, but instead of it being like this this like steampunk kind of like contraption that's building each location, it's like right. this fungal virus spreading and building locations and yep. um, being reminiscent of cities and just. And, I, I mean, I can go on and on and on about just how much we'll this continue is great. On, we'll continue on because I have a couple questions for you. But um, for me, I felt like this is... So recently, there have been some great video game adaptations. I mean, I think um, Uncharted was a lot of fun. I had a good time. Uh, Sonic movies have been really good. I enjoyed Without the Pokemon. humans, they were really good. Yeah. All of the actual Sonic stuff in that was perfect. Yeah. The Pokemon movie, uh, Pikachu, <sighs> Sex Pikachu, was good. You know, I liked it a lot. I mean, CG could have been better, personally, but um, I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but so, like, things have gotten better in the... Because everyone said, you know, the video game adaptations will never get good. And it's only really comic book movies who can really, you know, change the game. I think we're slowly getting there. For me, this is how it gets there. I have said for a long time, if you want to really dive deep into these video game lores and these video game adaptations they need to be made into tv shows to really sink your teeth into the story mm -hmm. now something like uncharted i am okay with them being movies because they're simple everything about them not simple but they're just at the, at the core of themselves they're treasure hunts they really it's are. an adventure story yeah it's an adventure story so those can be made into movies and that's fine but something like this or fallout or deep space or whatever you know something that has a deep story to it needs to be like even assassin's creed should be remade into a tv show i mean that to me would be great and so like this is where this is why i feel like this is probably the best adaptation we've gotten so far of a video game so far preface that um just from this episode one because of the opening now i'm gonna give this a 9.5 out of 10 because there was only one thing i felt like that it's it to be fair, I'm giving 9.5 because the one thing I feel like it didn't drive it the emotional or revelation hard enough. There was a, uh, the moment there. I'll get to it here in a bit because um, I want to get to the positives first. But there was a moment where a revelation happens and it wasn't as impactful as the video game. But we'll get to that. Some of the big things, of course, Bella Ramsey. I was hesitant. I loved her in Game of Thrones. I was a little hesitant because she just didn't look like Ellie to me didn't look like it and I was, I was a little concerned about because for me having at least somewhat look like to me is important it's, you know it's just it's always been that way for me um in order for me to really accept what i'm seeing but hearing her talk i was like okay i buy it she's allowed she's first allowed word out of her mouth oh first, yeah her first, first word out of her mouth i'm like that is ellie yep that's ellie that's a, you know talking shit cursing like when she when she when he steps on her knife he's so i'm like oh yep there we go um but then also pedro Pascal is he's so great in this i already knew he yeah. was going to be now there was a couple of people like hugh jackman i was like it could have been a little bit better but pedro Pascal owns the role same with gabriel luna i love him as tommy um oh my god his voice was like straight it, out of the game out, yeah and then uh anna Tra uh, torv i can't pronounce her last name playing uh um yes Tess, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Playing Tess, she was great as well. The biggest one for me that I really was happy about seeing was Nico Parker as Sarah, his daughter, his first daughter. That she found a way for us to care about her. Even and I knew what was going to happen to her. Some people in the fan, I guarantee you people who have never seen the game and watched this, I guarantee you they probably say the same thing. They fell in love with her and just seeing her die because she, the lens was focused on her most of the time. She was... yeah. How it perceived as she was the main protagonist. And to have that switcheroo happen, that was very impactful. It worked so well and just straight out of the video game. I loved it. And even we said, we were kind of talking back and forth, me and you. Um, we knew what was coming, but for some reason, I was on the edge of my seat the whole yep. time. And it's it's rare for a show, especially I know what's coming. Like when I watched The Hunger Games, they did that for me as well. The first movie, because I knew what happens in the first book, but still you're on the edge of your seat. And that's what good filmmaking does. It helps you just forget about everything you saw before and just keeps you invested. And I like how 90, I would say 90% of this first episode is straight from the video game. There were differences. There were differences from the video game to this that I liked because like, so initially in the video game, I mean, we're on spoiler territory. So in the video game, 
when she, you know, when she's in her house, she doesn't go outside to check the neighbors from the dog. The, you know, they she doesn't go over there. So that was something new for me. I was like, holy shit. We're, okay, we're, we're okay. We're deterring, but this is... We're deviating from the game, but this in a good way. Because you're keeping... You already pre-established um, that relationship she had with the neighbors. So, she's, of course, she's going to check on her, especially with the dog. And that was great. That was such a great scene. Um, some of the other... What was a small other thing? Um... Uh, of course, the opening we're talking about the 1960s. I wasn't in the game, but there was a couple other things where you're just like they, they they deviated a little bit. Oh, and then in the video game, correct me if I'm wrong, but Tess and Joel don't have a romantic relationship. It's not explicitly stated, but the there's the scene where there is a scene partway through. Uh, we haven't got to that scene in this show yet, but they establish that there's something between them that's even unspoken between them. Um, and she makes sort of a request from him. I, again, I, I don't want to go too deep into it because right. especially I, I, I very much encourage people to play the game. Yeah, game Even fun. if you're not a gamer, look it up on YouTube because the game alone is worth experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, and then coming back to the show because the show is taking deviations, but not in like bad ways. It's usually yeah, no, staying in spirit and whatnot. There, there's oh, yeah. certain things like um, you see the like tendrils coming out of the person's mouth, which wasn't the thing in the game. No, in the um, game they just bit them. They well they just bit them, but like the 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 implication is that they're they're passing on the cordyceps. This you actually see how it's physically being done and whatnot. And it's right. I don't know, it makes it even creepier to me and sort of evokes um some of the visuals from the I think it's the seventy six version of um oh darn I forgot the Oh uh, the body snatchers. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so there's sort of a visual sense that's similar, that reminds me of that. Um, I've lost my train yeah, no, of thought. You're fine. No, so that was, I mean, like I said, they were small changes, but they were good changes. I didn't mind that Tess and Joel had a relationship. Like, explicitly had a relationship. You know what I mean? I didn't mind that. It was fine. It actually helped move this, the story forward and made it a little more seamless. Because mm -hmm. before in the game, they didn't have... They weren't living together because that way you can go on missions or do this and that when they're separated. So that all made perfect fine sense to me. And then even then, Joel's reasoning, if I remember right, Joel didn't wasn't trying to leave to go find his brother. No, what happened in the game, the, because you, if you've seen this episode, you know the plot roughly up until this point. The original sort of motivation for the game was that the guy, Robert, um, was going to sell them guns. And he sold them instead to the Fireflies because the Fireflies had more money. Um, and of course, Tess and Joel go to confront him because they need the guns. It's established in the game that they're basically smugglers. They bring things in and out of the city. Yep. Um, Which they are in this. And they they go to get the guns from the Fireflies. And that's when um, uh, Marlene makes the deal with them to take this kid to the Fireflies instead. So the, the goal then becomes to take them to the Capitol building in Boston where the the story is currently set um to take to take sorry um la to the fireflies at the capitol building um whereas in this they're already establishing that joel is trying to find his brother there's been a separation between him and his brother which does happen in the game but they're explicitly stating that joel's motivation for doing any of this is to find his brother yeah and that he needs a vehicle to do this, which is still something that happens in the game. Yep. Um, and in order to do that, they need the battery, which is what Robert is trying to sell rather than the guns. And yep. he sells a bad one. The Fireflies don't want it anymore. And there's a shootout. We find them all dead in the hallway. Um, and it leaves Joel in a sticky situation where um, in order to get a battery now, they have to go and do this mission to deliver this kid. Yep. And then partway through this mission, as soon as they get outside, they discover that she is infected. Um, in fact, not no infected, but also some somehow immune. Yep. Um, and that immunity is going to be important going forward. Um, but I love the fact that they set up the established of the, the the brother relationship there. That there's been the falling out, but like Joel is focused on trying to find his brother right. because yeah, Tommy. Um, one of the things about Joel that, through the story is. Um, that family's super important to him. We already see it with him and his daughter. And even though Tommy is a fuck up in 
um, the game and the show, he still feels really protective of the brother. And I like that they're establishing early that he has that connection because that's going to be so important to other things later. Oh yeah. If, if you, if you, I, I think it's fairly obvious where the story is going. Um, I'm not going to say it explicitly, but I think people can infer from what's happening um, why family is important to him and how that kind of shapes things to come. Mm -hmm. But it's so important, and I, I like the fact that they, they've established this early. Um, yeah, just yeah, so... I agree. So I, I agree with that. And that's where I get to one of my... Um, it's not a negative. It's just something that could have been done better. Um, the revelation. Like, so... When she was chained up, even if you've never seen the game, you're like, okay, they're doing, they're making her do these tests, you know, and you got, and it makes you almost wonder why. And then you kind of start to slowly realize, oh, she may have been infected or something. But then when the revelation happens outside that she is infected and, but she's also immune, I didn't feel that, emo that, that, not, not really emotional, but that, that, um, revelation weight. Like, holy crap. You know what I mean? Like, not like a, like even though I knew it was coming, the 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 shock and emo an emotional weight of Sarah dying was done well. Mm -hmm. I felt like this was not handled in as well as it could have been. Like as far as the sh how it looked, how it was shot, how you know what I mean? Like no, I, I had the it, same it, thought. It was a little it was a little too quick. Like I felt like there could have been some drawn draw it out a little bit. You know what I mean? Well, they also. They're also coming to the end of that episode and they needed to kind of get them away from there fast. Yeah. So like you've got you've got this situation where um like there's been these gunshots, these Fedra agents are gonna be coming for you. Um, you know they're around the corner. Um stopping to have a conversation, a deep emotional conversation might kind of slow that pacing a little too much. Mm. I do agree with you that there should have been a little more emphasis on it and a little more um, emphasis. That was what I'm looking for. Yeah. It, like, especially like in the game, like you immediately get a close up of her arm. Um, like you see it, beat for beat. It's very similar, but I feel like there, yes, there should have been more emphasis on them realizing she's infected and then her declaring that, you know, this bite is weeks old um, and that she's not turning and yeah. that's unusual. Um, but then they do something else there that I kind of like that's, I, I think, brings about the same sort of urgency that's needed for that moment. And that is, a, <laughs> we recently watched, um, we, we do movie nights, the three of us, and we recently watched Back to, Future, Back to the Future. And the entire time I was geeking out about how good Back to the Future was at setup and payoff. And there was a setup and payoff moment in this that I feel like was taken right out of the Back to the Future um, <laughs> sort of method of storytelling where um, when they get to Joel's apartment, you see a billboard top 100 or top 1000 or whatever for like 60 book, years or yeah. something um, of like all of the major hits from various different decades. And um, Ellie immediately starts flipping through and gets to a page where there is a note and the note notes different decades and an interpret like next to it is a set of words and one is like safe one is like um, I don't remember what the exact words were, but um, it implies like that basically they established that the radio that they, they have beside the book is a signal and the yeah. different decades that they use to imply what the signal is. Um, like if it's 60s, it means one thing. If it's 70s, it means something else. If it's 80s, it means X, which is what's in the note. We don't know what that means. And Ellie basically implies and kind of tricks Joel into like telling her that um, 80s basically means something bad, something really bad. We don't know what, but something really, really bad. And then after they've done the revelation of this kid is infected, we need to get out of here as they're walking away. There's this slow push at the very end of and, the you hear radio. De yeah, and you hear Depeche mode, which is straight out of the 80s. And you immediately get the sense of dread that something is bad coming. Yeah. something is wrong and they're walking into danger and i love that setup and payoff and that slow push on that radio because they've already established what this means the audience knows what it means and they don't need to explain it any further it's just that that great filmic sort of moment of just hanging on that moment yeah um 
So, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of willing to forgive them the, the, the fact that they didn't linger on the um, implication of the bite much. I have a feeling that conversation is going to be what builds into the next episode. Yeah. Uh, like, that's the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to have a conversation about it um, and kind of establish where they all stand on this point and yeah. um, what they need to do to move forward. And, you know, we're probably going to get some sort of dialogue where Tess is telling, like, reminding Joel that you want to get to your brother. This is the only way. Yep. We, we need to do this. And Joel's going to be like, I don't want to do this. It's stupid. It's a child. I don't owe her anything. Well, um, I liked it. And that's one And that's one of the things I really liked, too, was you can tell he's pushing back on having to take care of the kid because he's still scarred from Sarah. Yeah. He doesn't want to have, have another child brought into his life because I don't think you don't think he can. I don't think he could handle that emotionally. Yeah. So I like how that's working out. And like he's pushing off. He's pushing away from it. But just. The thought, the thought of a child in trouble, all of a sudden he snapped and killed the guy, killed the officer, you know, when he thought that she who, was going to get shot. Who they did a good good job of establishing this character earlier in the show and then have this moment of, like, Joel has a relationship with this guy. Joel knows this guy, maybe not, like, personally, but, like, they have sort of business dealings and whatnot, and the guy warns him to stay off the street. The guy catches Joel on the street and has to do his duty, and there's a great moment there, actually, um, that they don't do in the game where they flash back to the death of Sarah. Yep. And he's seeing really the same well situation of the guy, the guy with a gun holding it on <sighs> his kid and he just snaps. And even though he knows this guy, he beats the ever living shit out of him to the point where like most likely he's dead. But um, the, the juxtaposition of the opening with the death of his daughter and this moment where he's saving the kid, um, even though he's established that he doesn't care about the kid, um again like I, I love what they're doing to to build this character build the relationship with yep. various different characters and like showing that he is dangerous he is a scary person and he's willing to do terrible things to accomplish his means oh yeah but he's also going to protect the innocent and um the implications of what that means for the rest of the story is very very important yep so I'm really excited for episode two. Uh, overall, this, the, I mean, we'll wrap up our thoughts here. This was such a great episode, near perfect for me. Like I said, that last little moment there, I felt like could have been emphasized a little bit better because that's a big, that's a big important aspect of the story and of, especially of Ellie's character and of Joel's. I mean, it's, it's, it's the most important part of the, like, it's, yep. it's, it's why the rest of the story happens. Yep. And then, um, like like the last shot of the, the the two buildings, like that's an iconic shot for me from the game, and seeing that in real life, like whoa, that looks so good. Yeah, like it looks so good. Like the attention to detail in this show is immaculate, from little tiny little details to to being a post apocalyptic world, especially in relation to the game as well. Like such a great opening to a show to a, a game adaptation is probably the best so far. Like I said we got we got to see the rest of the season to say for sure it's the best uh, game. To, um, you know, video game adaptation, but this is such a great start. I am more than pumped for next Sunday. What about you, James? I'm excited. I haven't been this excited for a show in a while, um, especially one that hasn't been like Star Wars or Marvel mm -hmm. or some sort of anime that I'm into. But this this one is exciting um, because I love the game so much, because I love the story. I love these characters. I'm excited to see this adaptation and to, to a degree, I hope they sort of start to deviate and to tell the story a bit differently. Um, we already know that certain things are going to happen the same way they do in the game because we've seen aspects of it in the trailer, but like, I do hope they have some creative license to go off and do their own thing. Like I hope this is the episode that sort of veers closest to the game. And then they sort of slowly sort of venture out and start doing different things and unexpected things. So that well, like, just like just like George R. R. Martin was very close to the um, working with the the show to make it as faithful to the books as possible. I mean, that's why you have one of the showrunners who created the game as one of the showrunners. I mean, yeah, he, I think he'll even though he may deviate, I think he'll still stick to the core because it's an adaptation. We, we should make this clear that, you know, when you're changing something from one medium to another, there needs to be changes. There needs to be certain things. And because this is a television show, yep. um, you can't spend certain time 
um, doing certain things. There needs to be a difference in pacing. Um, one of the things that he's changed is that there won't be any spores because spores was such a big thing in the game where you had to put on a mask. But that's a game mechanic that doesn't work in storytelling because um, it, it's it's not as effective. So they've gone with more of a tendril sort of thing that's yeah. I've been told is going to be an ongoing issue. Um, Neil Druckmann himself has addressed that it, it won't be spores. It'll be something else. Huh. Um, that will still make the circumstances. And I'm okay with that because, again, it needs to be a visual thing. It needs to be something different. And the game mechanics of that are not super important to the story. Well, you can still establish the same level of danger kind of thing and the same level of right. sort of immunity um, that Ellie has. Uh, but, yeah, just final thoughts on this. Just outstanding done. I love the fact that they've used dialogue and music that, like, they've pulled visuals when they're like driving it when when all hell breaks loose it looks like straight out of the game you know the barn burning down all of that stuff um when they get to boston and like everything's just run down it's like it, set pieces just pulled right out of the game and brought to life and it's like this this is visually makes me feel comfortable and at home because it, it reminds me of the game yep um and i'm willing to let them kind of deviate from the story a bit but like the, the heart of it is there the look, the feeling, the tone, the sound, all of that is perfectly out of the game. You could hear at the end the scream of the um, infected and whatnot. And it's like they have such an iconic scream yeah. that's so perfect. And there's we haven't got to it yet, but there are other creatures that also have a very distinct sound that we heard in the trailer that I'm very excited for because, again, the sound is so iconic. So like they they're hitting all the right notes and i know that they're hitting all the right notes so i'm willing to let them kind of do their own thing from now on um and tell me the rest of the story and i'm i'm hoping that there will be some good surprises for even us people who have seen the video game or played the video game and you know watched other playthroughs of it so many times yep um i'm very excited for this it's i i hold by my 10 out of 10 this is this is the perfect way you would adapt, adapt a game and i'm willing to let i'm willing to give them creative license from here on out i agree man all right folks that is for today thank you very much for watching more importantly what did you think of the season opening is episode one of the last of us leave your comments in the section below let us know your positives your negatives and your score out of 10 also if you like what you watched hit that like button right there subscribe to the channel so you receive all of our great content we have coming for you here on real time again i'm josh williams i'm james Sheridan, and thank you for keeping it real with real time good night